In this video, you're going to learn how to simplify factorial expressions. We're going to go through eight examples together. Let's dive in. The first thing we want to talk about is what exactly is a factorial? Well, you can see it's represented here by this exclamation point. And if we talk about four factorial, this doesn't mean like, you know, hip hip hooray four. <laughs> what it means is the factorial is telling us is we're going to start at four and we're going to multiply down to one. So it's four times three times two times one, which is equal to 24. Now, if you look at one factorial, that of course is already at one. So we're just going to say one factorial is one. And if we look at zero factorial, this one you're going to want to memorize. Zero factorial is actually just one. And then if we have three factorial times four factorial, you don't want to make the mistake of saying that's 12 factorial. What you want to do is you want to expand these out individually. So three factorial is three times two times one, and four factorial is four times three times two times one, and then you can multiply those to get all together. So let's dive into the eight examples. If you want to test yourself, see if you can pause the video and try some of these. Well, let's start with uh, example number one. We've got nine factorial divided by seven factorial. So a couple different options. One option is you can start at nine and multiply all the way down to one. Same thing here with the seven. We can say seven factorial is seven times six times five all the way down to one. But what some students like to do is once these match here, see once I get to seven, I could say that's seven factorial, which represents seven times six all the way down to one. This seven factorial is seven times six all the way down to one, or we could just leave it as seven factorial. And then you can see these seven factorials are canceling one another out, numerator and denominator, which just leaves us with nine times eight, which is 72. Again, you can write it all the way out down to one if you want, and then go ahead and cancel all the way down, no problem. Or again, like if you wanna stop once they match like that, they'll cancel all the way down to one. So let's look at example number two now. So here we have, four factorial times eight factorial, all divided by seven factorial times five factorial. So what do we do on this one? Well, we can't reduce, it's not like we're uh, like a fraction where we're re reducing, we have to expand out these factorials first. But one thing that I notice is that eight and seven are pretty close to one another and four and five are pretty close to one another. So what I could do is, let's start with this uh, eight factorial. So eight factorial is eight times seven, times six, times five, times four, all the way down to one, or I could just stop here at seven factorial. This seven factorial is seven times six times five, all the way down to one, or I could just leave that as seven factorial, and now we can see those seven factorials are canceling numerator and denominator. Now when I look at the four and the five, those are fairly close to one another. I like to start with the one that's a little bit bigger, okay, so the five, and I'm gonna say five, times four times three times two times one, or I could just say five times four factorial. This way the numerator and the denominator, they match, those four factorials are gonna cancel. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, all the way down. So we're really just left with eight over five, and that's as far as we can simplify that one. Okay, for number three now, let's look at this one. We've got a zero factorial, and our first instinct might be to say, okay, Mario, I can't divide by zero, right? But remember, zero factorial, we have to remember, is equal to one. So this is really just like the number one. One times anything is itself, right? So three factorial is three times two times one, and four factorial is four times three times two times one. You can see the three, two, and the one are uh, canceling out, and we're left with one in the numerator divided by four, so one-fourth. Okay, let's look at number four. Now here we're getting into some variables, right? So n plus two factorial over n factorial. What is n equal? We don't really know, but which one do you think is larger, the n plus two or the n? Well, it would make sense that the n plus two is larger, right? Say if n was 10, this would be 12 factorial over 10 factorial. So what I like to do is start with the larger factorial and start counting down. Now what I mean by counting down, like see how we had nine factorial and we did nine times eight times seven? Notice we're subtracting one each time to get to the next smaller integer. So the next smaller one after n plus two, I'm just gonna subtract one, that's n plus one. The next smaller one after that, if I subtract one, is just gonna be n. And I could stop here at n factorial because I can see that the numerator and the denominator, they match, they're gonna cancel one another out. So we're really just left with n plus two times n plus one. We can FOIL that out, 
or distribute twice, and that's going to give us, let's see, n squared plus n plus 2n plus 2, combine like terms, n squared plus 3n plus 2 would be our simplified expression there. Now let's look at number 5. So how would you do this one? Well, which one do you think is larger, the 4n plus 3 or the 4n minus 2? Looks like the 4n plus 3 is larger. So, I mean, again, you can do an example. Say if n was 1, this is 7. If n is 1, this would only be 2, right? So start with the larger one. In this case, it's the numerator, and then keep subtracting down 1 to get the next lower term, just like we did here. 9 factorials, 9 times 8 times 7, all the way down to 1. So this is 4n plus 3. Subtract 1, that's going to be 4n plus 2. Subtract 1, that's going to be 4n plus 1. Subtract 1, that's 4n. Subtract 1, that's 4n minus 1. Subtract 1, that's 4n minus 2. And I'm just going to put the factorial there, which represents dot, 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 going multiplying all the way down to 1. Now, why did I stop here at 4n minus 2? That's because that matches with the denominators, 4n minus 2 factorial. And you can see these guys are going to cancel one another out. This is our final result. You can multiply all that out, or in this case, I'm just going to leave it like this, and that would be our final answer. Let's take a look at three more examples. Okay, for example number six now, we've got 2n minus 1 factorial or 2n plus 1 factorial. Which one do you think is larger, the numerator or the denominator? Well, in this case, it looks like the denominator is larger, so I would start with the denominator, expanding that out. So we're going to start with 2n plus 1. Then we're going to go one lower, so subtract 1, that's going to give us 2n. 1 lower, subtract 1, that's 2n minus 1. I'm going to stop there because I can see that the denominator and the numerator are going to match. So we have 2n minus 1 factorial and 2n minus 1 factorial, numerator and denominator cancel. This just leaves a 1 in the numerator. Now we can distribute this 2n, and you can see in the denominator that's going to give us 4n squared plus 2n. Okay, and you've got the final result. So let's take a look at example number seven now. We've got a little different kind of problem here. n plus one factorial times just n plus two, not factorial, just n plus two. So what would that equal? Well, the n plus two is just gonna stay n plus two. The n plus one factorial, remember the factorial we keep counting down or multiplying down by one each time. So the next one would be n, the next one would be n minus one, dot, 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 all the way down to one. But notice how we're starting at n plus 2, and we keep subtracting 1. So you could really write this as n plus 2 factorial. Okay, and then the last example, number 8, we've got n plus 2 factorial times this trinomial, n squared plus 7n plus 12. So what would you do on that one? Well, I would start by factoring this trinomial here. And you can see it's going to factor to n plus plus 3 times n plus 4, because 3 times 4 is 12, and 3n and 4n adds up to our middle term 7n, right? And the n plus 2 factorial, we know this is n plus 2, and then the next smaller one, n plus 1, and then n, and then all the way down to 1, right? Notice here, multiplication is commutative, so this is really like n plus 4, then times n plus 3, then n plus 2, n plus 1, n all the way down to 1. So if we simplify this, uh, or write it in a more condensed fashion, we can write it as n plus 4 factorial, and you've simplified that expression. So great job if you're able to follow all these examples. If you want to see a previous video that I did talking about how to work with uh, factorials, go ahead and follow me to that video right there, and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you in that video.